Welcome to St. David's. We are so glad that you could all join us this morning for worship. Uh, we're thankful for all of you joining us virtually as well. You can find the full bulletin on the front page of our website, stdavids.net. Um, you may or, not, may or may not have noticed, but we have a lot of new people at St. David's. Um, and so what I'd invite you to do, uh, maybe during the service, is look around and find somebody that you don't know very well and introduce yourself. Uh, after the service. Um, we, we have such a wonderful community and it is such good news that we're bringing in, in new people. So uh, please do your best to, to welcome new people to our community. Uh, please stand as we uh, sing our opening hymn.
God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Job. Job said, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. There an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. The word of the Lord. Is God. Let us read Psalm 22 together in unison. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You are so far from me. Put their trust in you. They 
trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me left me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. There is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open their iron jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. <coughs> A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last. And the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Let's have a seat. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Ben Nelson, and I am the chaplain at your diocesan school, TMI Episcopal. Um, I am so glad to be here. I work for, uh, as my boss, the head of school, the Reverend Scott J. Brown, who, as many of you know, was a beloved curate here at St. David's. So I have a long relationship with y'all, whether you know it or not. Uh, Because when I was a curate myself, Scott and I would compare notes on our experiences. And there were many times when I said to myself, wow, St. David's is doing a lot right. So I'm really grateful to be here. I love your rector. I'm a big fan of your rector. I'm I'm an even bigger fan of your youth and families person. Mary Hayden is a beloved friend as well. I'm so grateful for the ministries that you do uh, as the people who are St. David's. So thank you for welcoming me this morning. It's such a joy to get to be with you. Um, Believe it or not, it's a joy for me to get to be with you during stewardship season. I know, bear with me. I love this time of year for many, many reasons, but most especially because it always reminds me of my experience growing up as a cradle Episcopalian as a pre- and as a preacher's kid. I used to absolutely dread October sermons. I did not want to hear one other word about pledge cards or budgets or money. So I have sat where you sit now. Those of you who are rolling your eyes and going, oh no, another stewardship sermon, I empathize with you. 
I thought about maybe taking it another direction and paying attention to the lament of Job. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. Hmm. No, that one doesn't work that well. Oh, okay, how about, how about the Hebrews? The Word of God is living and active. Okay, we can get on board with that. Deeper than any two-edged sword. Piercing until it divides soul from spirit. No, I'm going to take a pass on that one as well. Okay, I love to preach on the Psalms. So why not? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry? What? Seriously, who picked these readings? Well, okay, money it is. So you see, the joy of this time of year for me is that it gets me in touch with my journey. And listen to the words of the gospel for today. Jesus is about to set out on a journey himself. Now we know that that journey will take him eventually to the cross. We know that that journey will take him through the ups and the downs of his life on earth. And eventually to the amazing and beautiful miracle that is new life and resurrection. But we're not there yet. Because today we get the story of Jesus talking to what we have called in scriptural studies the rich young ruler. This man, this young man, comes up to Jesus, buttering him up first by saying, Good teacher. Now, as one who teaches sixth graders world religion, I love it when my students come to me and say, Good teacher. I'm not as humble as Jesus. I don't ask why they call me good. I just accept it. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life, says the man. Well, says Jesus, what are the rules? Don't kill anybody. No adultery. Honor your mother and father. Don't lie, cheat, or steal. It's pretty basic, right? Well, that young man who, like me, was probably a cradle person of faith, stood, stands up proudly and says, I've done all of these things since I was born. He holds his head proudly and says, all of these are easy for me. And then Jesus drops the hammer and says, okay, good. Then sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. Excuse me? It's like a year's worth of October sermons in one sentence. Sell all that you own. Give up your attachments. Come and follow me. We never know what happens to that rich young ruler. We never know except that he was shocked and went away grieving. We know that he went away grieving, heartbroken, because he had many possessions. I'm not a Greek expert, but I like to also imagine that that sentence could also be translated, many possessions had him. I don't know about you, but throughout my journey of faith, I have gotten attached to things over and over and over again. And sometimes it's money. I get attached to things. I hold on to things. I don't want to let go, and I certainly don't want to turn over my will and my life to the care of the one who created me, redeems me, and sustains me. It is a constant struggle for me of failure and success. So when October rolls around and we start talking about these little pledge cards that you got in the mail this year, I remember my own beginning of that part of my journey. I was called to San Antonio, Texas from Jackson, Mississippi, which if you grew up in Mississippi, San Antonio might as well be the other side of the moon. I was called to be a youth minister at another church here in town. 
I won't tell you the name, but it rhymes with smeconciliation. <laughs> Perhaps you know the current rector. I was called to serve as a youth minister, and I knew that I was also called to a deeper life of faith and practice. So when the fall rolled around and we started talking about pledging and giving, I immediately went to my favorite resource on all things faith, my best friend, the Southern Baptist. Now friends, let me give you a little fair piece of advice. Take it or leave it. Sometimes that's not the best course of action for an Episcopalian. Because my dear, beloved, best friend, Junior, Yes, that's his name. I remind you I am from Mississippi. My best friend Junior said, well, you got to tithe. Excuse me? This was not a word I was familiar with. I'm a cradle Episcopalian, remember? I'd heard of a pledge card. My friend explained the 10% of giving the world of giving in 10% that goes all the way back to Abraham in the book of Genesis. When Abraham encounters God, it realizes that he is going to be blessed beyond measure and promises to give a tenth of all that he has. It continues with Jacob after he's wrestled with the angel and you know climbed that ladder of dreams that Huey Lewis in the news sung so well about, he too promises to give 10%. All of this is a reminder from our biblical heritage and tradition, said my Baptist friend. Well, a tithe it is. I had decided. I took my pledge card, didn't even bother reading it, and filled it out. 10% of 13.5 or whatever it is a youth minister was making back then. And I jumped right in. Now I wish I could say that it was the most rewarding and wonderful experience of my faith life. But it was not. It was an abject and miserable failure. Because you remember back when you get your first paychecks and you realize that they take taxes out? And you have to pay for insurance and rent and groceries and all of these things? I had not accounted for such things. I was in big trouble. I couldn't do it. I simply couldn't. I would have had to default on rent or not eat. We all know that wasn't happening. What was I going to do? I panicked. I worried, I fretted, and then I got to that place that we sometimes get to around money that I call shame. Y'all know that place? I believed that I wasn't enough because I didn't have enough, and that's a terrible place to be. I was shocked, and I grieved, but I went to my rector. I want you to hear that. I went to my rector. Not once did I get a call from the Diocese of West Texas's collection department. Not once did the senior warden have me on her radar. Not once did anybody really care. I went to my rector and I said, I cannot fulfill this promise. I don't know what to do. And in the grace and mercy of God's Holy Spirit, that person who, otherwise, who is pretty much otherwise unmemorable to me said something I will never, ever forget. He said, Ben, stewardship is a journey. This is where you are right now. Let go and let God. And that was it. It was such a merciful and grace-filled moment because I realized that this little card that I filled out was not a, a single bit about the money. It was about my commitment to this life of faith. Over the years, as that journey progressed and I stayed with it, 
I began to see how the spirit of generosity and commitment was changing the world around me. Now listen, hear this well. Wherever I pledged, wherever I committed to this act of generosity, the institution wasn't affected all that much. But I sure was. My life was changed by the repeated practice of making an intentional commitment to give out of the depth of what had been given me. I could set a percentage to it. I could follow a tithe. It didn't really matter. All that mattered was that I stayed in touch with God's touch in my life, that I looked at the gift of what I had been given as a resource to help others. Because at the end of the day, my little tithe, my little gift, didn't make a whole lot of difference for the bottom line. But it made a whole lot of difference for the bottom line. Y'all hear me on that one? The commitment to generosity can change us as individuals. It can change us as families. It can change us as congregations. To the point where we begin to let go of the things that possess us. There's a reason why Jesus talked about wealth and money and getting a camel through an eye of a needle. He wasn't just trying to be cute. He knew what we would hold on to. He knew we would worry, we would fret, and we would walk away shocked and grieving when we got into that shameful place that says, I'm not enough because I don't have enough. When we're in touch with God's touch, when we don't resist a generous urge, we begin to connect to the very real truth that you and I, as people of God, are made in the image of love. We are made in the image of the very one who created the heavens and the earth. And that image is generous beyond our imagination. I'll bet you, when you sit down with that pledge card and you begin to think about all the blessings that God has given you, you will, be, you will realize how truly rich you are. Even in the midst of our darkest days and our biggest failures, we are a people who are blessed to have one another, to have this place to serve others, and to worship the Most High God. There's a beautiful prayer that I love to remember this time of year because of my abject failure as a pledger. It's the prayer for young people in our beloved prayer book. It says, oh God, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world. Allow them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but, but as a chance for a new start. If there's one thing that we can say about this stewardship season is that it is our opportunity to get in touch with that very simple truth that we are on a journey and our commitments to one another and to the work of God in this world matter. Not because of budgets and bottom lines, but because of hearts that are transformed and made whole and healed and changed the world one day at a time. Amen.
standing together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God, the Father, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten not made, of one being of the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for David and Rayford, our own bishops, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for Blake, Max and Gray, Andrew, Frank, Brennan, Tim and Peggy, Ruth, Bill, Alice, Colleen, Betty, John, Robert, Edward and Susan, Joe and Haiti, Bayless, Dee Dee, Megan, Carmen, Bob, Lee, Charlotte, Forrest, Flynn, Josiah, Louise, Amy, the family of James Mergia, and all the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety that may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For James Mergia and all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have 
rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed David, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess the sins God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to turn to your uh, announcement insert. Um, if you didn't notice, well, you know, we are entering into stewardship season. Um, you know, I had a friend who, oh, long ago, he, he started coming to church with me, and he wasn't, uh, he, he, didn't, he wasn't a Christian before that, so he didn't really have familiarity with all the weird things that go on in church. Um, and so he had little nicknames for all the different parts of the service. He called communion snack time. Uh, he, he calls uh, the offertory uh, halftime, you know. Uh, so it was just like a time to sit back and relax. Um, the offertory isn't halftime. I think we would all prefer it to, to happen outside of the narthex before or after church. Um, but it is, there's a reason that it is embedded into the middle of our service. Uh, it is part of our spiritual formation, part of our prayer life. Um, so on November 7th, that's Sunday, we're going to ask all of you to bring your pledge cards. Um, and during the service, everybody's going to come up and bring them to the altar to be blessed um, as a part of that service. Um, so we ask you to be in, in prayerful discernment in the weeks to come. Um, and this year, we're, we're kind of asking ourselves, uh, why? Why do we give to St. David's? And so we invite you uh, to think about the, the many different reasons. And this week we're considering um, that we give not only because we receive, uh, but because St. David's provides a place where we can feed others, where we can give to others. Um, so again, um, I, I invite you to pray on full discernment about uh, what you will give in the coming year. We have a lot coming up, uh, and so I invite you to read, read this one change is that Kids on a Mission is not today, it's uh, moved to October 17th, um, so, uh, you know, that will be next week in between the services, um, and we have gap group today for our third to fifth graders. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, and if you are, are uh, wanting to find more ways uh, to be involved, please come, come and find me, and, and I'll help you get connected to the many ministries we've got going on. One thing uh, particular is that if you look in the pew back in front of you, we have little new uh, cards in, in the pew back, and uh, they look beautiful, Whitney. Um, and one of them says, update uh, your information. Um, we're hoping that we can get everybody's information updated. So if you have not yet done so, please just use that QR code 
um, and update your information so that we can have accurate records for everybody. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? <coughs> Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Just a reminder, uh, as we move in, into the Eucharistic prayer, that we are uh, giving Eucharist in both kinds, bread and wine. However, uh, the wine we are, aren't drinking from the chalice. Um, so if you would like to partake of the chalice, just hold on to your wafer and you can dip it as the chalice goes around. Uh, if you're not ready to, to, to take part in that just yet, that's fine. Just uh, hold your arms over your chest and the chalice will know to pass you by. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for, for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give our hands to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us. And upon these gifts, 
sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with David and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us bless the Lord.